In the city of Santiago, Chile, lives an astonishingly beautiful woman, Amanda. She works for an architectural firm and is very good at her job. One afternoon, Amanda calls her boyfriend, Pablo. She wants to go to her friend Fernanda's birthday party together with him. What Amanda doesn't know is that her boyfriend is in Fernanda's bedroom, cosplaying as a kitten. As the two talk over the phone, Fernanda distracts Pablo, making him hang up in a hurry. Seconds later, they accidentally call Amanda again, and she hears them moaning and meowing. It doesn't take her long before barging into Fernanda's house with a shotgun. Upon realizing that they have been caught, Pablo says that he was kidnapped, but Amanda isn't naive enough to believe him. She shoots him in the crotch, ensuring that he never cheats on anyone else again. In the following scene, Amanda is with a psychiatrist discussing anger management. She doesn't show any regret about what she did. In fact, she is confident that she would do it again if she were in such a situation. The psychiatrist reveals that any person with her level of anger issues must be confined. The information changes Amanda's opinion on everything, and she suddenly feels very sorry for what she did. She is let go after she makes the doctor believe nothing of such sort is going to happen again. The case has made it to the police, and hence to Amanda's job. She explains to her boss that she was betrayed by two people she loved the most. He contemplates her position in the company, and decides to fire her. In the end, Amanda no longer wants to live in Santiago. She packs her bags and moves to the city of Valparaiso. Her brother has an empty house that she can stay in for the next six months. She is also confident that she will get a decent job in the city. The only thing Amanda is worried about is being pursued by men. She doesn't want to date or fall in love with anyone after what happened the last time. However, an attractive young lady like her is never left alone. She goes to the church to calm down and makes friends with the pastor after telling him of all her problems. He also has no immediate family members and lives on his own. He welcomes her to come to him anytime she needs a friend to talk to. At home, Amanda goes through many job vacancy advertisements in the newspaper. All of them have a requirement lower than her qualification and experience. She picks one randomly, which coincidentally happens to be an architectural firm, like the one she used to work in. Next, she buys a fat bodysuit, ugly dentures, and prosthetic makeup to make herself look unattractive. After putting everything on, she is unrecognizable, even to the people she knew earlier. In the following scene, she goes to the firm for an interview. Her boss, Max, asks her many questions and finds out she has a husband and two sons. Amanda believes that the husband's story will make her lie more presentable and reduce male advances. Max doesn't ask for any authentication and hires her because of the experience she possesses. For the first time in her life, Amanda feels valid because she is sure that her beauty didn't get her the job. After that, Max introduces her to the staff members and their roles in the team. First is a married man named Juan. He has three kids, a full-time job, and is studying to get his master's degree. Then, there is Karen, a hot young office girl who does the least work, but is favored by everyone because of her beauty. That's just like a Karen. Lastly, we are introduced to an architect named Marcelo. He is the typical womanizer who judges people based on how attractive they are. Marcelo's day-to-day -day life consists of working and bringing home a different woman every night. He meets Amanda for the first time and is instantly repulsed by her. Given her appearance, Amanda also figures out what kind of man he is and quietly curses his shallow thoughts. The two warn themselves to stay away from each other, unaware that destiny is about to intertwine their paths. In the first meeting, Amanda is told about an old Telmex building that was recently remodeled by their company. They have completed the project, but there has been some interference in the building's internet service because of an unknown problem with the structure. Amanda instantly recognizes that it must be because of a VP1 service problem. Karen thinks that Amanda's involvement with the project will only create more complications because she is new to the job. She wants to be the one to solve the problem, but Max thinks otherwise. Karen is dismissed, which makes her despise Amanda instantly. Marcelo and Juan are asked to accompany Amanda to the problem site and help her. The men are not happy about being her assistants, but they oblige anyway. In the following scene, the trees are on the terrace of the building. Amanda is working hard to find the problem, while Marcelo is busy boasting about his sexual experiences to Juan. 
Amanda tells them the interference must be coming from the railway station. They go to the location, where Marcelo and Juan continue their conversation while Amanda works. She finally figures out that the water channels that pass right under the building are interfering with the waves. Amanda and Marcelo go to check the water channel, while Juan stays to monitor when the train departs. Marcelo stays outside to check the frequency, leaving Amanda to go into the channels on her own. She doesn't fit in between one of the gates, and takes off her fat suit. As the team is communicating through walkie-talkies, Amanda's device stops working. Before she can get dressed, Marcelo comes to see if she is okay. Amanda quickly flashes her flashlight in his face, and says that she had to take her clothes off so they wouldn't get dirty. Fortunately for her, Marcelo turns around and leaves. After a successful day at work, the three go to a pub to have a few drinks. They drive Amanda's car, which she has filled with children's stuff to make it look more realistic. At the pub, Marcelo yet again cracks sexual jokes, making the other two uncomfortable. Juan leaves early to study, leaving Amanda and Marcelo behind. Once alone, Amanda calls him out for being a shallow man. Marcelo proudly agrees, and claims that children and marriage are the end of one's life. Amanda feels bad for him because he will never experience real friendship and love, one that lasts more than a single night. Marcelo still describes his dream girl's body, and is unapologetically a womanizer. This infuriates Amanda, reminding her of her ex-boyfriend. Even when she is at home, she cannot stop thinking about his comments. Upon taking the fat suit and wig off, she sees that she looks exactly like the dream girl he described. Amanda makes it her mission to teach Marcelo a lesson, and goes to the club again, this time dressed as her real self. When they meet, Marcelo instantly feels attracted to her. Throughout the night, he tries taking her somewhere private. She leads him on, and then rejects him, confusing him as to whether she is interested or not. In the end, she promises to meet him the next day, and leaves. The following day, Amanda goes to the pastor and tells him everything she did. The man tells her she is going to regret last night, because she will have to tell him the truth one day. Either that, or she could just blow his dick off with a shotgun. However, Amanda is adamant about wanting to teach Marcelo a lesson. In the office, Marcelo brags about meeting a girl in the club, and her being totally into him. Amanda knows he is exaggerating, but keeps it to herself. In the evening, Marcelo excitedly waits for her to come to the club, but after an hour, she texts him that she won't be there. The same thing happens the next day. After hours of waiting, Marcelo gets a text saying they should meet at his place tomorrow. At work, he brags to Amanda about the new girl who is so into him that she is coming to his home at night. Amanda smiles and listens to his stories, knowing very well that he is lying. Marcelo buys takeout and puts it on plates to pretend that he made it for his date. She soon arrives and starts flirting with him. After eating and talking for a while, things get steamy. Marcelo is kissing her arm when she stops him and says that she is going to be late. After she leaves, he is left confused because no woman has ever treated him this way. He pours his frustrations onto Amanda at work. By now, he has started to see her as an actual friend, something he couldn't do with any other woman in his entire life. Meanwhile, Karen is burning in jealousy, because she has a crush on Marcelo. She spies on the duo all the time to understand what they are talking about. Later that day, she asks Amanda about her children. This makes Amanda realize that if she doesn't show her children to the people, they will probably start suspecting her. Hence, she asks the pastor to arrange for two little boys to come on a playdate with her. This is sus on many levels. The next day, she brings them to the office and proves that she is in fact a mother. Surprisingly enough, she sees Marcelo playing with the youngest kid. He has frequently described how much he hates children, which seems to have been a lie. At night, Amanda goes to his house for a second date. Something about Marcelo is different this time. He puts more effort into getting to know her, rather than flirting. Eventually, they go to his bed and start making out. Things get heated pretty soon, but they come down in an instant, when Marcelo doesn't get an erection. In the following scene, Marcelo is telling Amanda everything that happened. She suggests he put more effort to impress the new girl, like actually cooking for her instead of ordering takeout. They then go to his house and cook together. This is the first time Marcelo has had a female friend come to his house, and he feels amazing about it. After eating, they go to the terrace and talk for a long time. 
Amanda declares that Marcello is just afraid of commitment and promises that he will find love one day. Suddenly, he leans in and kisses her. He apologizes right after, but they cannot deny the sparks they feel in their hearts. In the following scene, Marcello is with Max, talking about his love life. Max asks him to close his eyes and think of a woman. Marcello doesn't say who he saw, but knows that the girl is the love of his life. Later that day, Amanda comes to his house for the third date. To her surprise, Marcello says that he is in love with her. Amanda knows he is lying and is sad that he is still the same person after everything they talked about. She makes him wear women's clothes and cuffs his hands to the bed frame, but in contrast to what he had expected, she brings out a knife and cuts his stomach. A few hours later, the police arrive at the scene and let Marcello free. They realize that the blood is fake and the woman just wanted to scare Marcello. The news makes it to the television and Marcello is humiliated. Amanda has taught him a lesson, like she wanted to, but something doesn't feel right to her. When she tells the pastor about this, he declares that she is in love with him. When Marcello comes to the office the next time, he tells her that he is a changed man now. What happened to him yesterday has made him realize that she was right. He has to start looking for real love, not just one night stands. With that being said, he goes out with Karen. At night, he arrives at Amanda's home drunk. She keeps him from seeing her and talks through the door. Marcella reveals that he proposed to Karen and is going to marry her this week. However, he also reveals that he is in love with Amanda. She is far from his type of woman and is married, but he couldn't help but fall for her. He knows that she will never be his, which is why he is marrying Karen. Both of them shed tears and separate without saying anything else. Then, the day of the wedding finally comes. Amanda and Marcello meet outside the church. Amanda tries telling him the truth, but decides otherwise. They share an emotional hug before the ceremony starts. The priest asks Marcello if he takes Karen as his lawfully wedded wife. Everyone waits for his answer, but it never comes. Suddenly, Amanda sneezes, and the fake dentures fall out of her mouth. Marcello takes her wig off, finally realizing the truth. The scene then cuts to a few years later. Amanda and Marcello are married with three children and a fourth one on the way. They live a happy life with their family. If this movie taught me anything, it's that misogynists and psychopaths always finish first.